One of the common mistakes we see here at the lab is uh, when we work on these Mac hard drives, usually it's going to come with like a three terabyte or a one terabyte drive inside made by Seagate. And the first thing uh, that you will see when you remove the screen, which is actually glued in on these older models, um, the drive is sitting right here like this. So it's very easily seen right away. What isn't seen is the second part of this storage device. And that is because the SSD, unfortunately, is quite hidden. The board would be sitting this way when you undo the screen. So aside from the drive, you're not really going to see anything else in regards to the storage. But there is probably a way to find out whether your um, iMac has a Fusion configuration or if it's just a standalone hard drive by uh, searching the serial number of the device which is located on the back of the unit or at the bottom of the unit. You guys see this connector right here. This connector is for the SSD portion of it. What uh, Apple came up with when they designed this Fusion is what is known now in the modern world as a SSHD, so solid state hard drive. And uh, it's part hard drive, part solid state drive. So <laughs> you're inheriting problems from both. A portion of the data is kept on the solid state drive and portion of the data, majority of the data actually is stored on the hard drive. Now, the hard drive stores the data that isn't accessed all of the time. And the SSD stores data that you want access the most, so it's your file system, so that your performance and experience using this machine boosts up a little bit and it's uh, working a lot faster than just running off a hard drive. In order for us to assemble this Fusion and have access to it, we need a few things. Uh, number one, we need to somehow convert this SSD into SATA. This uh, is a SATA version of the unit, so we kind of got lucky with that. PCI Express uh, versions will need to be converted to USB. Maybe in some other episode, I'll demonstrate how that's done. So here I have a SATA connector. I just plug it in like that. And now both of these devices have SATA connection. So in order for my Mac to understand that this is a Fusion, all we need to do is have them both connected. They can be connected through individual SATA adapters or through something like this. This unit houses two drives. It's a dual bay direct attached storage that can be configured in many different ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this hard drive into bay number two. And that's done with uh, four screws on the side to each side. And the SSD is very light, so I'm not gonna try to find a way how to secure it with anything other than just a piece of tape so that it sits nice and snug. So the aluminum portion here slides in this way. And then there are three screws that uh, link them together. This box is configurable. It has uh, configurations for RAID 0, RAID 1, large drive and a normal drive. RAID 0 means it's going to stripe up both of the devices to increase the speed but reduce reliability because at any point if one of the drives fails, the second one does not technically have any data. So you'll need to recover data from both of them in order to assemble it again. RAID 1 is a mirror. Mirror will reduce the, the volume between the two drives down to only one usable hard drive but it will add extra layer of reliability because if at any point one of these devices dies sooner, you still have a second one as your backup copy. 
uh, the large device is a JBOD configuration where it uh, adds both of the volumes together. And the last setting right here is normal. That's what I have it set up to right now. What that means is that both the drives inside of this bay uh, are gonna be accessible on their own. So they're basically standalone units. And uh, if we had two random hard drives plugged in in there, we could uh, operate with them individually through the single enclosure. So let's go ahead and power this thing up. There's a single power cable right here, and we're gonna need a USB-C cable to link it. USB-C cable goes into my Mac, and uh, just gotta hit the power on button. When we go into our Mac, we see that the OS mounted, and we have access to the user profile. If we need to look for something that's been deleted, or if we need to find files in more efficient way than the regular operating system can offer, we can use external tools such as our studio to help us navigate through the file system and look for files based on their creation date, modification date, uh, extension type, etc, etc. Plus we have all these different masks that we can apply. How to use Tools such as RStudio is not the topic of this video, but if you guys want to check it out, I'll drop a link to a demo version of this tool in the description box. I literally think it's one of the best softwares you can download for your home use and uh, highly recommend it. So that's pretty much sums it up for how communication with a Fusion device can be established using a Mac. Big problems happen when um, without understanding how the iMac is set up, in uh, specific cases where the Fusion is present, we only get the hard drive portion of the device because uh, the hard drive, like I said, it has majority of the data, but everything that you want quick access to is stored on the SSD. So that includes your file system, that includes your OS, that includes your um, most commonly accessible things that are kept on the SSD. So without that part, the only thing we can extract is information that is stored on the hard drive in a raw format. What does, what does it mean when we mean raw? Raw is simply extracting files based on their digital signature types, and they're gonna be classified by their extensions most of the time. So we're gonna scan the drive after imaging it and performing a rebuild on the hard drive. Usually these things come in because of the hard drive failure. Hard drive fails, and uh, <laughs> the system needs to be rebuilt. Uh, but if the drive is repaired by itself without the SSD, we can only get raw data out of it. So when you're taking apart an iMac, just make sure it's not a Fusion. And if it is a Fusion, remove the logic board out of there and remove the SSD to pair the hard drive with it. Otherwise, the recovery results are not going to be as clean and as good as they can be.